Hi, I'm Jenny Fish with One Big Happy Yarn Company. We want to be your local yarn shop no matter where you live. Welcome back to our baby hats, mitts, and booties knit along. In the last two episodes, I showed you how to make the ribbed and rolled edge and the ear flap hat. In this episode, we will be making the mitts and booties to go along with them. You can find this kit along with all the supplies you need at OneBigHappy.com. Are you ready to learn how to make mitts and booties? Let's get knitting. We're gonna be making these cute, adorable mitts. You start with a stretchy cast on, work the ribbing, which is a purl one, knit one ribbing, do a small increase on this row right here, work in straight stockinette, and then I'll show you how to do the decreases and finish off the top. Let's get started. I'm gonna be working with my 40 inch circular needles and I'm gonna be using Magic Loop. You can use double pointed needles if you want to, but I just prefer to use the Magic Loop for this project. Because my cast on needs to be stretchy, I'm going to use a two needle long tail cast on. To do that, I hold my two needles one on top of the other like this. Now to determine where I'm gonna put my slip knot to start my cast on, I'm just gonna grab here. I'm only casting on 20 stitches. It's a pretty small project, so I don't need to um, be exact on that. But if you want to, you can wrap your yarn around your needles 20 times and that'll give you a good starting point. So I've made my slip knot here. I'm gonna put my tail towards my body, my working yarn out front. I'm gonna slide my needles through my slip knot and tighten it up. Now I'm casting on 20, but because I'm using Magic Loop, I'm gonna cast on 10 and then place a stitch marker for my middle point. So I've got one, two, three, four, nine, ten. So I'm at ten. I'm going to let go of my tail and kind of let it wind back in on itself. When I'm doing the twisting for the long tail, sometimes it untwists the, the threads there, the strands there. So you can let it relax and twist back on itself. Slide my stitch marker on. Okay, now I'm going to cast on ten more. One, two, three, four, five. Sometimes your yarn might slide between your two needles as you're doing your cast on. If that happens, just undo it and start again. You want to make sure that both needles are being covered with the yarn. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right, here we go. We've got all ten of our stitches on our two needles. We want to take one of the needles out, so hold on to one and pull the other one out. Now I'm going to slide my work to the center of my cord, and this is where the stitch marker comes in handy. I'm going to bend my cord and pull my stitch marker. And now my stitches have come together. I'm going to put my needles into the magic loop start position by pushing in them back. I want my working yarn to be on the back needle. So for here, as I push them through, I need to slip or flip. There we go. Okay. Now, I'm going to be working a knit one, purl one ribbing. So I'm pulling my back needle out. And here we go again. I'm going to put a slip knot in my tail so that I don't start trying to knit with that tail. It happens a lot. Okay. Pull my back needle out and my first stitch is a knit stitch. I need to make sure that my yarn is in the right position so I don't unintentionally create a yarn over. I want it on the back side. Because I'm knitting, the yarn needs, the working yarn needs to be in the back of my work. Okay, so I knit one stitch. My second stitch is a rib. I need to bring my yarn to the front and I slide my needle in from right to left wrap, and then I go back to a knit, and then a purl, and then a knit, and notice how for the knit stitch I slide my yarn to the back, for a purl stitch I slide my yarn to the front, do 
do just a couple more here and I'll be at the end of this first needle. Okay, at this point here, I have finished all the stitches that was on this needle. I'm gonna flip my work and now I'm gonna start on the second needle. Making sure that I haven't twisted any of my stitches. I need all of these inside stitches to be facing on the inside. If your stitches get twisted, you'll create a Mobius. And what that is, is like the infinity symbol where it weaves in on each other. And there's no way to really undo that. You have to take all of your work out and start over. So my last stitch on here was a purl stitch. So my first stitch on the new needle, oh, and at this point you can get rid of the stitch marker. You just needed it to hold that center. I'm gonna put my needle down into my work and bring the back needle forward. And this is gonna be a knit stitch. So I need to also make sure that my yarn is behind my needle so I don't have any yarn overs there. Okay, now I'm gonna knit this stitch and purl. Continue on with the knit and purl for four rounds. And then I'll show you how to do the fifth round where we incorporate an increase. Okay, on here I have gone ahead and knit four rounds of the Knit One Purl One ribbing. I have gone ahead and attached a stitch marker to my beginning of my round. That is where my tail was hanging out, so that's where you know that's the beginning of your round. If you're using double pointed needles, you probably will only be having, only have your stitches on two needles. We are gonna be increasing two stitches evenly in this round. So the pattern doesn't tell us exactly where to increase those two stitches, just that you need to do it evenly. So for me to keep me on track, what I like to do is go ahead and knit the first stitch. Make sure my yarn is on the right side of my work here. I'm on a new round, so my first stitch is a knit. I like to do that first stitch and do my increase in the second stitch. That gives me a place where it's basically it's consistent. I'm not doing my increase on one of the uh, changing of needles in the rounds and stuff. It's inside my work, but it's right away so I don't forget about it. So the increase that I'm doing is a knit one through the front, and then I'm gonna swing around to the back loop, slide my needle in, and knit one through the back loop. So now I've taken one stitch and made two. Now I can slide that stitch off. Then I go back into my ribbing pattern of knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. All right. So now I'm ready to get back into starting position. I'm doing the second half of my little mitt here. And again, I'm gonna go ahead and knit my first stitch normal and do my increase in the second stitch. And that's evenly increasing two stitches in this round. And again, I'm gonna knit through the front loop, swing my needle around and go into the back loop right here and knit. All the time I'm still keeping that stitch on that needle. Now I slide it off. I've gone from one to two. Now I'm knit and purl to the end of this needle. Once I get back to my stitch marker, then we're gonna go into stockinette and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so now we have done our increase and because we knit through the front loop and then the back loop on the purl stitch, we have what looks like two knit stitches here and then a purl stitch. Doesn't really matter because our next row is stockinette, which is knitting all the stitches. So we're gonna go ahead and just knit every stitch. Again, making sure that our yarn is in the right position. It needs to be in the back of our work 
And now we're going to knit and knit. And we just continue knitting every round until our mitt measures the length that um, is for the size that we're making. So check your pattern, see what length you need for the size that you're making. And just go ahead and continue knitting round and round until you get there. And then I'll show you how to do the decreases. All right, so we've gone ahead, we have cast on, we've knit our ribbing, we've done our increase, we've done our stockinette. So let's go ahead and measure to see how far we are. We measure from the cuff up to the needle. And let's see, right here I am at two inches. And I'm measuring from right underneath the needle to the edge of the cuff. I'm at two inches. For the size that I'm making, that's where I need to be to start my decrease. The decrease, the first decrease round on this pattern is a knit two, knit two together, or a K2 tog. Let me show you how that's done. First, I'm gonna knit the first stitch, one, knit the second stitch, two. Now I'm going to do the knit two together. I go to the second stitch, there's one, two. I slide my needle under both of those two stitches, just through that first bar, slide it through. See how it looks on the back? Now I'm gonna wrap my yarn around and knit those two together, pull it through. That has taken two stitches and made it one. That is a one stitch decrease. Now I'm gonna knit the next two stitches and knit two together just like I did before. There we go. Then I'm gonna knit two stitches. Now, you'll see here that I only have one stitch left on this needle, but I need to knit two stitches together. So what do I do? Well, I just pull my needle through. It slides that stitch to the back. Now I flip over. I put my needles into the Magic Loop starting position and now I can knit two stitches together. Pull my back needle out, slide under two stitches like that, wrap my yarn, knit two together. Then I'm back to knit two, there's one, and two, and knit two together. And then knit one, knit two, and knit two together. Here's something else I wanted to show you. In this pattern, when it comes to decreases, it has a little note, and that note says, in the following decreasing rounds, knit any extra stitches. Well, my pattern is a knit two and then knit two together. I have enough here to knit two, but I don't have any left to knit the two together to finish out that sequence. It's okay. They've wrote this pattern so that it can um, cover many different sizes and each of those sizes have different amounts of stitches on your needle. So now that you have knit your two together, go ahead and just knit those last two off and you're fine. It is okay. This is a, such a small project that um, they just didn't want to write out, you know, the final knit two together for this size and then however many is left on the other size. It's okay. Okay, so I finished that round of decreases. I'm gonna flip over, go back to my magic loop starting position for my next round. Now I'm gonna knit two rounds. These are our resting rounds. It gives a little bit of room between that decrease and then the next decrease that's gonna happen. So let me just go ahead and knit two rounds here and then I'll show you how to do the next row of decreases. Okay, so I've knit two regular rounds. Now it's time to do our final decrease, which is a knit two together, all the way through this whole round. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide this through and knit two. Again, I'm sliding my needle through two stitches, then I'm knitting those two together. I'm taking it from two stitches to one stitch. 
and I'm going to go all the way around. And here again, I have one stitch left on my needle. I'm just going to pull my needle through and move that to the back side. Flip my work around and go back into the starter position for Magic Loop. And knit these two together. And I just have one stitch right here. We're just going to knit that. Now we're at the point where we can, the pattern says break your yarn. That just means cut your yarn. I'm going to leave probably, I like to leave a little bit longer of a tail than normal just because I want some room to weave in those ends. I'm going to take my bent tip needle, see how it's bent right there, and thread it with my yarn. And now I'm going to slide all of these stitches from my needle, knitting needle onto my tapestry needle here. And cinch it through. Slide this through. I'm going to do the same thing here with this one. And we are almost done. Slide that through there and cinch it up. And here is our adorable baby mitt. Isn't that cute? Okay, now we're going to weave in our ends. So we're going to slide through the center. And just go ahead and weave in our ends. This is at the tip of the hat. You can do a duplicate stitch or if you want, or you can just kind of slide it through a few times. You want to give it some structure because hopefully this will get used a lot, which means it gets washed a lot. And you want to keep it nice and tidy in here and secure with your ends. So now, are you ready to make our adorable baby booties? Let's get started. So let's take a look at this booty that we're going to make. We start off with casting on for the bottom right here. And then we're going to work flat back and forth, creating the sole shape. Then we're going to work on the toe area and then the instep. Once we get to this area right around here, we're going to join and start knitting in the round. Then we're going to alternate between the garter ridge and the stockinette. And I'll show you how to do that. Once we get to the length that we desire, we'll go ahead and cast off and be ready for blocking. So let's go ahead and start by casting on. For this pattern, I'm going to be using double pointed needles to cast on and knit. And um, the size that I'm using is, the size that I'm making is the three to six months. So I'm casting on using the magic loop method. But because this cast on is the bottom of the booty right in here. I'm not going to worry about it being a stretchy bind, uh, a stretchy cast on. I'm just going to go ahead and cast on like normal using one needle. I'm going to make my slip knot, slide it through my double pointed needle, making sure that my tail is towards my body. My yarn attached to my ball is on the other side. Slide my fingers through, come back into the slingshot method. Go under and under and through. Now I've got two stitches. My first stitch was my slip knot. There's my second stitch. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now I'm going to place my stitch marker and cast on 10 more. One, two, three, four, eight, nine, and 10. Okay, so I've got my 20 stitches cast on. Now I'm going to flip my needle over, grab another double pointed needle, and we're going to start 
shaping this area right in here. To begin with, on row one, we're going to do an increase. I'm going to go ahead, as always, put a slip knot in my tail so, I'd ac so I don't accidentally grab it and start knitting with it. So row, row one, we're going to start off with an increase. This increase is a knit front and back increase. We're taking one stitch, turning it into two. So I knit into the front, bring my needle around, knit into the back of the same stitch, leaving it on the needle, and I've made two. Now I can slide it off like that. Then I'm going to knit to two stitches before my stitch marker. So just go ahead and knit till you get to two stitches before your stitch marker. Almost there. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the same increase by knitting into the front of the stitch, bringing my needle around the back, knitting into the back of the stitch. And now I've created two stitches from one. I'm going to do that again. By, adding, uh, by inserting all of these increases right here in the center, I am allowing some extra fabric there to create the top of the toes right in here. This is where I'm working at. Okay, now I've slid my, I've slid my sli stitch marker and the next two stitches are also increases through the front loop, through the back loop. I'm going to go in the front loop and the back. And so now I'm going to go ahead and continue to knit to two stitches before the end of the row. Okay, I have two stitches left. I'm going to do another increase, knitting through the front and the back. go and then knit that last stitch. So I have finished row one here. Row two is simply knit all the stitches. I'm going to go ahead and knit all of these stitches. When I get to the stitch marker I just simply slide that from one needle to the next. Okay, So now I've finished that row flip it one more time. Now I'm on row three. Now on this one I want to go ahead and place a stitch marker so that I can know which side is the right side of the fabric. So this is the time we're going to do that. And we'll go ahead and continue the same as we did on row one with all of our increases. So go ahead and finish your, follow your pattern working the increase row and then a knit row back and forth and then meet me back here when you're at the point where it says um, there'll be so many stitches and that, that number is dependent on the size that you're making and then I'll show you how we move on to the next step. So here's what it looks like after you've built in all of those increases. Your center is going to have a little bulginess right here in the middle and um, now you're ready just to continue knitting both sides until you have six of these garter ridge rows. So this is what it looks like after you have six rows of garter ridges. And let me show you how to count those because it gets a little confusing. On this side, I've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then I flip it over. On this side, I've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. So that's what six rows of garter stitch on both sides look like. Okay, now we are ready to start the instep shaping. And let me go over that with you. We are on row one of the instep shaping, and we are going to knit to the marker and then remove the marker. Okay. 
Now I'm going to remove my marker and knit three. So one, two, and three. And then an SSK, which is a slip, slip, knit. So I slip, slip, and then I slide them back and knit through the back loop. There we go. Now, because I'm doing shaping, at this point, I'm going to flip my work. I'm going to stop and turn. So I'm going to turn. Now I'm on row two. Let me reset because we've started in set, step shape. Okay, now we're on row two. I'm going to slide one, and that means I'm taking the first stitch from this needle and I'm sliding it onto this needle. So I slide one, and now I need to move my yarn to the back of my work and knit six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then it's a K2 tog, which is knit two together. So I'm going to slide my needle under the two stitches, wrap around, pull through, and I've gone from two stitches to one. There we go. And now turn. Now I'm turning, and I'm on row three, which is slip, knit six, and SSK again. And you'll see this little gap here. You wanna look for that because that's gonna show you where to do your next X SSK. That's gonna tidy that up and pull those two together. So I slip, slip, slide them back, and knit through the back loop, and then turn. Now I wanna show you on this finished booty, we're working, we're starting to work in this area right here, the top of the toes, and we're doing these um, knit two together and SSKs. They're closing up this area right here and shaping the top, right in the top right here. That just gives you some kind of idea of where we're at in our pattern right now. Okay, so we just turned and finished row three. Row four is the same as row two. So continue working in your pattern and meet me back here when you get to row six and I'm gonna show you that step. Okay, after you have finished row five, your work should look something similar to this. You have your shaping going on here. This is where you've been doing your decreases. It's causing this little pucker here. This part right here, you are forming the top of this foot right here. Now we are ready for row six and we're introducing a new stitch here. It's the purl stitch. First we're going to slide the first stitch and then we are going to purl six. To purl, your yarn is in the front of your work and you slide your needle into the stitch from right to left. You wrap your yarn and pull through. We're going to do that six times. Two, three, four, five, six. And now we are going to purl two together. So we slide our needle, and this is that gap that we've been normally doing in knit two together or an SSK. Now we are going to purl two together. Slide it through both those two stitches, wrap your yarn around, and pull it through. Now the reason for these purl stitches, and I'll turn around and now you can see, I've gone from this purl bump here to this V-shaped stitch right here. It's changing. This is where we're at right now. We've done this row, and this right here is that purl row that we just did. You're gonna continue between a knit row and a purl row, creating this V-shape right here and cinching up on the sides. These are where your decreases are. This is where your purl two together is. And this is where your SSK is, right here. You're creating the shaping back and forth. 
So I have 26 stitches on my needles now. This is what it should look like. I have this area here. This is the top of the, the booty right here. And I have finished all my decreases. So now what I want to do is continue knitting for the rest of this row. So back and forth, you've been working back and forth this whole time just in this one little section right here. Now it's time to go ahead and incorporate the rest of the stitches that are on your needle. So we're going to knit to the end of this row and get all of these stitches back onto just the one needle. No turning this time. Go ahead and continue knitting to the, get to the end here. Okay, so here we are. Now we want to turn our work facing us. We are going to join in the round. I prefer to just use the two double pointed needles and knit with a third. You can add a third on here. The directions tells you how to divide the stitches between three needles. I'm going to divide them through, uh, divide them onto two needles. So for the first step, I'm going to knit eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so now I've knit eight. Then I'm going to knit two together and then three across the center. One, two, and three. Now I'm going to flip over and divide my stitches. And now we're going to bring in a third needle. I'm going to knit three more. One, two, three, and then knit two together. So I'm going to slide my needle through those two stitches, knit, and then we'll go ahead and knit all the rest of the stitches on this needle. And then I'll show you how to join in the round. Okay, I'm going to stop right here for just a second and show you what we have here. Here is our toe. We've done our side flaps right here. And we've done all the stockinette stitch right here. We are right here getting ready to join in the round. So we're right here, ready to join these two pieces. So we're going from knitting back and forth to now knitting around and around. So here's where I just let off. I'm putting these two needles together and now I'm gonna knit into this very first stitch right here joining the back needle to the front needle, just like that. Okay, we're going to go ahead and continue to knit round and round for four rounds. After that, we'll switch to a purl stitch and you'll purl for four rounds, round and round and round. And just in case you forget, this is considered the beginning of your round. So you can go ahead and mark that with a stitch marker so that you know that every time I get to this stitch marker, I can click my row counter to a next round. So we'll do four rounds of this, then four rounds purling every stitch, back to four rounds of knitting every stitch. And you can go as many times as you want back and forth. Um, the pattern says three, so that's kind of where your, your yarn is, is measured for that size that you're making. But if you want it shorter, you could go two. If you want it longer, you could go four, five, whatever looks, whatever you're wanting. So now I have knit and purled and knit and purled and I have these cute little transitions here alternating between garter and stockinette and now I'm ready to cast off. I'm at the beginning of my round. I'm going to go ahead and knit the first stitch, knit the second stitch, and then I'm going to take my left needle, slip it under the first stitch and lift it up and over and slide it off. 
Then I'll knit the next stitch. Take the first stitch up and over. And what I'm doing is I'm binding off the stitches. I'm closing up, taking my loops and intertwining them into each other so that they don't unravel. Basically that's, you know, what you're doing when you're binding off. You're getting your stitches off your needles in a secure fashion so that they don't unravel on you. So we're going to go ahead and just continue knitting and then slipping that first one over that one and it's causing this little braided look right here and it's securing those stitches. We'll do that all the way around. And because this is the top of this little booty and going to be sliding over the baby's foot, we want to make sure that we do keep it a little loose as we're binding off. So we're making our stitches quite a bit looser than we would normally when we're knitting. That way we have room to uh, slide it on and off the baby's foot. So I've just cast off my last stitch to secure this last loop. What I'm going to do is take my yarn and slide it through that loop and cinch it up. Now I can just go ahead and weave in my ends and then I'll show you how to stitch up this bottom area. So I don't need that long of a tail here on this. So I'm going to clip this down a little bit and this yarn into our bent tip needle, which works fantastic, and I love this needle. Slide it through there, because when, let me back up and show you this real quick. When you cast off, you kind of have this like little pointy area right here. See how that is next to that? I like to just slide my needle into this loop over here, this first stitch, and cinch that little hole up, and then come in here and do weave in my end and tighten back and forth. And I like to go down like one of the rows here, back and forth, kind of hide my yarn in there, like this, and that, and then just slide it right back up. That secures that without making it too bulky. That's the key there, okay? And then you can just trim that off and voila. Now we want to seam up this area and here is where it is on this booty right here. I'm going to go ahead and use the tail from when I cast on to whip stitch this closed and then I'll come back here with some more yarn if I need to. The great thing about these being baby booties, these are for babies, so I can just do this whip stitch. I don't have to worry about them walking on them. And that way, um, this is, this is going to be comfortable on the inside to their foot because I'm whip stitching on the outside of the booty. Okay. Then I'm just going to go ahead and close this up. And I am going to need another piece of yarn for that last, so I'll just go ahead and weave in this end right here, right along that ridge. And that's really secure to me. Clip this. And you'll do that same whip stitch along this edge right here, and then your booty will be finished. You can choose to block these if you want to. Um, these are such small projects. I would probably maybe get them wet and with, with some wool wash, scrunch them out, and then lay them flat to dry just to get my stitches even. But I wouldn't worry about like stuffing them and setting them up. I just let them air dry flat and they'll be good to go. Thank you for joining me as we made these hats, mitts, and booties. I'm positive that they're gonna look adorable. Remember, you can get the supplies you need along with the yarn and printed pattern at OneBigHappy.com. Be sure to hit the subscribe button below and click the bell to be notified every time we have a new video. Happy knitting!